It's time for ER 101 with expert guests provided by the American College of Emergency Physicians. Here's Dr. Lee Vinoker. Hi, and welcome back to ER 101. My guest experts on Ebola, Dr. Roddy Vukamir and Dr. David Piggott. Um, Dr. Piggott, just to get back a little bit to uh, preparedness, I mean, first of all, I worry more, too, about urgent care settings because people think you can treat anything in an urgent care. We already know we've done shows in the past about that. Um, and they really, a lot of them do not have the um, capability uh, to isolate. I know a couple of the urgent cares in the area, it's just their message is isolate and call 911 and don't even touch the patient. So um, I worry about that. But And there are new guidelines for CDC, and you're, you're on a committee. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what's coming out? Sure. Um, I'm part of a, an Ebola expert panel through the American College of Emergency Physicians, and in broad strokes, the guidelines that are coming out are going to emphasize identification of patients at risk as well as isolation and for the patient and for appropriate uh, precautions for the staff members as well as rapid informing of hospital infection control and other uh, folks such as the local health department. To follow up on your message about urgent care, we've certainly seen that in our community where patients might present to an urgent care center um, and even a call might be made to the CDC where the CDC said the patient's fine, go home, the urgent care physician's not comfortable with that and sends them on to your emergency department. Right. And Dr. Vukmer, I know because I've worked ur- urgent care shifts too and um, at our where I work, we have both ERs and urgent cares. And the truth is, you know, we don't have the hazmat suits and the urgent cares don't have them. Um, and their basic message is strict adherence to their guidelines, which is, you know, two questions. Ask the symptoms. If the symptoms are suspicious, ask travel. If that happens, completely isolate, shut down the urgent care, talk to the experts, and then transfer. Um so have you been seeing that in your community, and and um, how are they dealing with that? Well, you know, we, we, we do have a little bit of exposure, but thankfully it's, it's, it's been um, something that's been readily triaged as, as non-exposure. You know, we're getting calls about the Ebola vaccine. When will that be available? We get calls about sort of casual contact. You know, we've had a presentation that was was a travel history, but was, you know, not one week ago, but four months ago. So <laughs> we are getting some public awareness and exposure. Now, um, you know, working as a part of a larger integrated group and network, you know, we've got some 140 odd hospitals. And, you know, typically most urgent cares have a um, allocation and transfer protocol in place for all manner of things that they don't do at the urgent care center. So as you point out, there are people that stroll in every day with an MI, a stroke, (laughs) you know, significant pneumonia, and this will be no different. So, you know, at the administrative level, as an emergency medicine professional, you want to make sure that you have a, 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 a referral policy that gets patients to the appropriate emergency department resource or you know, quaternary or tertiary care referral center. As EMS director, again, you know, thankfully we work with colleagues who, again, as as the adage goes, you know, they're people that run away from emergencies and and we're people that run to emergencies. So you work with your EMS providers. You make sure that they've got adequate training and staffing and uh, protective devices and gear that they understand uh, that will allow them to to take care of this uh, this issue as it as it as it gets more common. At least the questions will get more common. Right. And Dr. Piggott, let's get to this idea of a travel ban because Eric uh, Thomas Eric Duncan came in through Brussels, and Dr. Spencer also came through Europe. As a matter of fact, somebody pointed out that. 
uh, West Africa, there really are no direct flights to the United States. So somebody is going to be coming from some other connecting flight. So what do you think about travel bans? I think travel bans are not the best idea right now. And I think that position is echoed by the CDC and the World Health Organization. Just because if you put a travel ban in place, people who want to get from point A to point B are going to find another way of doing it that's going to be less accessible to monitoring. And that could potentially lead to more cases of imported disease through, you know, less typical channels. Right now we've identified, I think, five airports where flights that uh, originated in West Africa can land. And as far as I know, in Europe, I think only Brussels now um, is the um, destination out of West Africa. Air France used to fly into Guinea and other locations there, but they've suspended those flights. Yeah, it's interesting. And Dr. Vukmer, another issue um, besides people maybe not being as truthful and forthcoming of what's going on if we start creating these bans, you know, and we'll we'll talk about it a little bit later too, is it can actually hurt the issue in Africa, right? And the situation in Africa, I mean, it's not going to get better here unless it gets better there, right? So there's all these issues with humanitarian um, aid if you start uh, banning travel. Correct. Absolutely true. And again, recognize that you know, in a in a in a country with the resources such as ours, and and people that have a number of diverse interests and passions, there are people that are here that will go there, no matter what the consequence. So we need to support that group and and help them as much as we can, whether it's with resources or financially. And again, on the return, maybe we establish a you know, sort of a uh, sort of an observation period, as you hinted to before. The the only thing I would suggest, you know, is sort of this one. You know, physicians um, look at history, and a lot of times people ask questions about simple yes-no answers. You know, we don't, as physicians, give a lot of simple yes-nos. Most of our problems are multifactorial, such as this one, and we often give a range of possibilities. The only thing that I would suggest as a historical touch point for people that are interested is to go back and look at the influenza epidemic of, of you know, somewhere between 1917 at its earliest and 1920 at its latest. But when you look at that sort of disease, it, it, it again had a higher virulence, a much more higher mortality rate than had been exposed, and it affected sort of young, otherwise healthy people much like this virus. The typical influenza affects age extremes, you know, very young, very old, but it's actually people that are involved out of the house in day-to-day commerce that are sort of involved in, in, in a disease like this one, as well as that influenza epidemic. I think if you go back and look at that as a touch point and look at what was done in that day to try and stem disease, you might get some ideas about different ways to approach. Well, what um, what was done back in 19, 1917? I don't think a lot of people were flying into the country, so exactly. we only have a there were a, cu- <laughs> there were a couple of phen- phenomena. It was steamship travel, not airline travel. Uh-huh. We had a world war at the time. There was a right. lot of troop transport, and there were countries that imposed an absolute travel ban, and they did not have disease. <laughs> oh, and you're saying they didn't have disease when they banned Did travel. Did not. Uh-huh. Well, and truthfully, it's much easier, as we said before, to catch influenza. That is definitely a sneeze and a cough in someone's face, and uh, they may not look that sick. So um, with that said, uh, it is pretty interesting. But they are talking about at least quarantine for a longer time during that. Uh, those coming in from those countries. This is ER 101. I'm Dr. Levin Oker on Radio MD. Stay well and tune into your health.